Morning all, I thought we could have another wonderful aesthetic experience looking at the chess sacrifices of Alexander Morozovich. He's one of my favourite dynamic aggressive grandmasters and he's one of the players that actually won Lloyd's Bat Masters when that, when that was very popular in London along with uh, Shirov another year. So he was mowing down his grandmaster opposition. So my fascination started back then. So. According to Wiki, he's been one of the best players in the world for nearly a decade. He's famous for employing unusual openings, for example, the Shigorin defence, and also the Albin counter gambit. That's something I've been using in Blitz quite a lot. Both systems are hardly ever seen in the top level. He is well known for preferring complicated rather than clear positions. Due to his risky, risky and spectacular style, with, which produces relatively few draws, he's quite popular among chess fans. Let's have a look now at this first example is against Viktor Bologan in the Russian Team Championships of 2004. So Bologan had just played F takes E4 here. There seems to be some apparent dangers for the King already and previously the D pawn had been sacked to create pressure on that D file. So why it's got various resources but uh, Alexander has got a great position already. He's you know set up a disaster potentially for the Black King, and you'll see actually a lot of these examples. I've just noticed intuitively if you focus on his rooks in particular, they seem more evidently placed for attacking the King than than s some of the other videos in this series. So watch out for the placement of the pieces, particularly the rooks, in in the attacking uh, constructs here. So in this position. Queen c3 was played and it sets up that pin. I want to show you what the engine thinks about this position after, but let's just go with the game continuation. Queen c3, so a dangerous pin on g7, is created. Now black should have apparently played this, and uh, maybe might even hold, but he played this, e3, which is a bit on the greedy side, uh, basically looking at the rook here, but it does mean the way it can be paved now to g7 by sacrificing the rook brilliantly with rook takes d4. So queen takes h1 is played, king a2 and also the bishop is now taken. So rook and bishop just taken there but white is regaining a rook now because after rook takes d8 queen g7 is threatened. g takes, g takes still renewing that threat of mating. And now black played queen g4. What would you play in this position? And it's a wonderful move. If I give you five seconds now uh, to pause the video, starting from now. Okay. Queen H H check a wonderful finishing move, celebrating that diagonal fully. The pawn is actually a great attacking resource here. So if the king moves here, then this is a mating two in any case. So the king really needs to accept it. What's end of game? Takes check, knight g eight. Bishop e five is mating here. Look at that pawn, the rook. So the only legal move for black is queen g7. We could finish off like this, for example. A wonderful celebration of that attacking diagonal. If we go back though, there's even something the engine picks up which is really quite interesting here. Very interesting indeed, in fact. That actually uh, the diagonal can be celebrated very uh, technically with a move which I think humans would reject, bishop e5. I say humans would reject this because it seems to allow knight f3. After knight f3, can you see what the engine spotted in this position, which is quite spectacular in its own uh, right? So five seconds starting from now. Okay, queen takes e4. <laughs> Unbelievable. If takes here, then bishop takes. And this is amazing. If rook f7, we take on d8. 
if king h8 again we, we celebrate the diagonal so the computer is good at celebrating the diagonals as well or bishop g7 and you might wonder well what if knight takes e5 because doesn't that protect the queen it's still really dangerous this diagonal queen takes e5 and black hasn't got a chance really to defend uh, here if rook takes rook takes okay throwing in a check there's still this problem if king f7 here then this is mating we just drag uh, the rook back for queen g7 so black's best apparently is to try and run and after this check taking this is just a disaster really for black this position okay black would have to give up the queen so a fantastic attacking position to start off with and he's got all the ingredients of, of a great attack here. He's, he's sacked on d4 to really make this diagonal more sensitive. So he's really set up the scenario for it. But uh, yeah, queen c3, f takes. Te technically, um, there might have been, you know, if knight f5, apparently, this might not have been um, totally winning. But that just shows his style. You know, he's willing to take risks, to have these complex positions where your opponents can go wrong. And it can lead to absolutely spectacular finishes. So let's have a look at another example now against Vichy Anand playing white. He's had strong pressure already. Queen f3. Uh, so Vichy hasn't got too many choices here. He can either protect the knight or counter maybe with queen b6. But in both cases, it's not very good. He protects the knight. And now, guess what? White plays here if I give you five seconds starting from now okay knight takes g6 I think this is much stronger than bishop g6 let's examine that in a moment because we've opened up the rook immediately after h hg it's very clear now we can use the bishop here bishop takes g6 Wow, so it's t it's a double piece sack here to really tear apart Black's defensive pawn chain around this king. So f takes, rook takes. Still, you know, it's a piece sack here, but a double attack on d6 and g6. Vichy Anand tries to defend this position with the move queen f7. Now a very very powerful move from White. Can you see what White played in this position? It's the very, very strongest move according to engines. What would you play here? Okay. Queen d5. It's really powerful. It's, it's an attack on the queen. And although, although the knight can apparently, it seems, play this, it's not particularly um, good here. White has two very good moves in this position. Morozovic played the stronger one actually. Quite very, very accurate attacking uh, moves. You might consider, if I give you five seconds here, okay, what would you consider to play in this position? Okay, you might have considered this. This is good for white using the pin immediately, but knight here is is not entirely as clear as the game. This position here, if queen ta um, the queen's pin, sorry, pardon me, queen takes. Th this is apparently it's okay for white, but even stronger was played actually um, in this in this position. Rook takes f five was played. And that ended the game. Uh, basically, let's have a look. If queen takes, then here's a mating two, double check, and queen g8. And look at the pawn again. Controlling key, escape squares. And if g takes, in this position, actually g6 is the crushing move. <laughs> An attacking pawn. Black would have to give up the queen. Anything else is like double check and mate, or double check and mate is immediately horrible. Wow! So a wonderful, you know, attacking display here. Uh, you might think, well, if Bishop G6 does that do the same? It's not. It's not the same really. Fg and we we don't have as much 
unfair. It's not really doing anything. Like G6, it can be ignored. So extreme accuracy is behind these combinations. Um, so knight takes and then taking hair. The double piece sack destroys black's uh, pawn chain around the king. And then this beautiful move queen d5 sets up all sorts of pins. And both knights are kind of helpless even though they've got access to g7. White eliminates one immediately with this move. Uh, so crushing stuff. So if here rook e8 mating on g8 which actually blocks the rook as well. So giving queen access to g8. Wonderful stuff. Now let's go on to another example. So Morozovich was playing black here and this was from an Albin counter gamut position. You can see the dangerous like center pawn, odd center pawn as remnants of the opening. So d3 had been played, bishop g5 and now a nice little move with exploiting the queen's pressure, that's the clue. What would you play here with black? And the engine loves this move, it's a wonderful move. Engine loves it. If I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, knight e4. So the queen can't take, because uh, we just take on d1. And it carries on being worse here. We can actually take on g5. Well, we've got this dangerous d pawn, that's to be avoided. So, white now takes on e7, and things get interesting here. What would you play here to carry this on? Super accurate play from black. Okay, five seconds, pause the video. Knight takes f2. So seemingly giving the bishop a chance to retreat. If the bishop goes, say, here, I think we, we just take here, actually, and this position uh, is the exchange up, anyway. So, um, okay, so white plays queen takes f2. Morozovich takes the rook. Check. So at the moment it's two pieces for the rook, but look at this d pawn, queen c2, and black now threatens d2. This d pawn is the Albin counter gamut, you know, dangerous, you know, center pawn about to crash through. White plays, um, white's in a bad state here. He plays bishop d6. Uh, so the king's in the center still. So it castles queen side now, late casting. After king g1. Now, uh, is there a point to stop d2? Well, maybe, because d2, there might be bishop f3. But even so, this is still better for black by this stage. But uh, a, a cute little continuation instead. Queen takes f2. King takes rook h8, <laughs> winning material like this. So white resigned here. So chorus chess tournament of 2005, that was from even Sokolov playing white there. Now, this next example is a kind of comedic construction. The rook seems <laughs> directly placed on h3. And I think there's been a saying, if you have a knight on f8, it's more difficult to be mated. So is that the case? Well, there are two units attacking and two units defending, correct? So white needs to do the maths here and add some more pressure on h7. What would you play? as white here to put more pressure on h7. If I give you five seconds to pause the video now, the next move. Okay, e5, sorry. The next move was b5 in this position, pardon me, from black. And it's here, white played e5. So we're going to do a bishop e4 hitting h7 again. Uh, so black took this and we have bishop h4, bishop e4. 
Now, black plate H6 and white continues really uh, aggressively now, pointing at H6 with three pieces with F5. The rook's not so funny now, it's, it seems very useful in cooperation with the queen and the bishops. So white seemingly going to rip black apart with bishop takes h6 here. Pizzolico scrambles for a second line defence here with f6, trying to get his queen to defend across the second rank. Does it help? Bishop takes, it's played, takes, queen takes. So immediate threats, check, and and then winning the queen actually with the check here because the queen's unprotected in this position. We see check, queen g7, but this leaves c6 hanging. In fact, Morozovic just takes on c6 here, doesn't mind this position. His double pawns are useful here, that pawn's going to win b5 potentially. Queen takes h6 is played, so rook takes h6. And white is standing better in this position. Okay, so the game continues. Rook e d eight. Knight e four. Another perk of that e five move to give that knight a beautiful square. Hitting f six now. King g seven. Rook takes f six. Now this pawn could be dangerous. Rook d c eight. C takes b five. Well, has Morozovic missed something here about this loose piece on b1? Peter Lico plays rook takes c6, exploiting the pin. b takes, rook takes, but aren't these pawns dangerous? So white is a piece down now. f takes e6, but his pawns are very menacing with e7 as a major threat. Bishop d3. And in fact, give black some more pieces. E7. These pawns are very, very dangerous here. Bishop takes e4 check, king g3. This pawn seems to be extremely dangerous. If black played, well, black played knight g6, if he plays rook b8, then actually c7 here, and these two pawns together. They're going to queen, for example, like this. One of them's going to queen. So black tried this knight g6, as though there's something dangerous about white's king position here. e8 queening. Black now takes on f6. So three pieces for the queen, but off the check, king f7, c7. Black tries now to mate white with rook b2. Or get a draw. If off the check, there's a knight f4 construction, could be a perpetual check. But now, queen d7 check. The king can't step back because it'll be check here, so it steps forward. And in this position, the loose bishop is exploited with g5 check. It's actually winning the bishop. Black resigned here. After king takes check, we can snap off this bishop, and that's the end of the game very clearly. So against Peter Lico that was aggressive stuff from the start. Apologies for not skipping B5. B5 is the original move here. But yeah, White's playing on this H7. So it seems to you know, break, this, break this general idea about king safety. If you have a defensive knight on F8, are you safe? Not necessarily. White's mounting pressure here. The rook's just the start of it, the construction for the attack. It's, it's been, the weight is added to H7 after bishop E4 here. And after f5, it seems you know both bishops are basically pointing at black's king here. Well, it's also got that e4 square for later. Uh, so black gave back a piece, but um, this e4 square is now really dangerous. The rook is actually useful for winning f6 here, and it's white's pawns in the end in this position. Wonderful move c takes. The engine loves this move, giving up the rook here. Amazing stuff. Giving up the rook here because these actually, these pawns are so dangerous in this position, and it didn't even ma matter about you know, these pieces now being totally loose. Uh, e7 is a really strong move, engine approved. Um, there's another way of losing the knight. It doesn't doesn't really matter. But this this was spectacular, really. That white's helpless in this position, 
because uh, of rook b8 c7. So fantastic stuff all the way through, really. Very exciting chess. Now the Tal Memorial, and it's this is this next example was from the Tal Memorial. Again, another funny construction with the rook as as part of the attack. This is what impresses me about many of these examples: the the, the power of the rooks for, as an attacking piece. Morozovic has purposely got his rook round now with rook a3, looking at a7. It's a dangerous spell to help for Kramnik's king on the queen side. After a6, can you see what white played here? He wants to add more pressure, more weight, more justification for that. Seemingly offside rooks, and like our other example, how can we add more weight to the pawn chain attack here? Logical stuff, really. You know, is it ridiculous? Is it absurd? It depends on the, what the follow up here is to add support to that rook. So, white play here. If I give you five seconds, what would you play with white starting from now? <clears throat> okay, c6. White wants to be able to play c5 to add weight with this. And it's already attacking the pawn chain. Black took. Now much better than taking, I don't think this does anything, in fact it might not do anything, Queen b4, black's got play. It's still okay for white apparently, but uh, no, much better to so shut down the queen, attack the bishop with the bishop as well. This is really dangerous now. Kremlitz, king side is evaporating, king safety is evaporating rather. Takes, so now queen a4 would be good. That rook's not so funny now, it's really dangerous. Bishop c4. Black takes, queen takes. The rook is mega dangerous now. Knight e7, king c2. So this knight is now threatening all sorts with the double check as it's discovered check as it's unpinned. King e8, knight f3, and hitting the queen after queen f6. I'm not sure there's anything black can do in this position. In any case, white now plays rook d6. Uh, is this stronger than rook takes d8? Rook takes d8 is also very strong in any case, but rook d6 kind of opens up another line of attack potentially after rook takes c takes. In fact, Kramnik resigned here. So, what's the point about this um, pawn sack? Let's have a look. If, if black had played on, say, say here, check. Well, I could actually just take here and be a rook up. Uh, so you might wonder, hold on, was that really needed? Could white have just? Uh, might, I think white can actually just take here. It was, it was a crushing position. Um, the check. No, this is the point. This is the point. Yes, there is a very strong point about this. The queen is protecting the rook here. Okay, so you see that after rook d6. Pardon me. After rook d6 here, um, unless black wants to leave that horrible pawn on d6, his queen's been distracted from h8, making rook a8 basically more effective. If the queen fleed, uh, I don't think this helps. Queen e6, it starts to get very nasty. There's rook a7 on the cards, uh, or just taking rook a8. So, yeah, the queen is distracted here from h8, leaving that loose piece. To be picked up. Okay, so Kramnik mashed there. It started with that odd looking rook again in that example. So, here against Vangi Alexev in the Russian team championship of 2004, you see an attacking rook here, you see a pawn chain here. How does white get some time to smash through black's defenses? Well, the first move. Is ignoring all this pressure on c3. It's queen h4. <clears throat> and after bishop takes c3, even stronger it seems than b takes is another move. Can you guess what white plays? He wants to justify the h file, the rook, the queen. White to play. What does white play here?
Okay, h6 is threatening to tap Black's king apart. And for the moment, the bishop is actually in the way. The rook's, of course, supporting c2. So f takes, h takes, threatening, queen takes here. Apparently, we're mating free after queening. So h5 to stop that. Now, another very, very strong move. Can you guess, if I give you five seconds here, what does white play? Okay, queen g5. So just threatening to smash through with takes, takes and rook h8, potentially, or, or just, yeah, it's just very, very dangerous. Black took on g7. Now white took on c3. Uh, it's a very, very strong position here. Possibly uh, there's there's more there's more accurate play apparently in bishop h3 as well to be looked at later. But let's have a look at the game continuation. Bishop f7, check. Rook takes h5, so threatening mate. G takes. Bishop takes b5 to quickly get this rook over here. It's a very Tal esque game, this one. A takes, check. Queen takes g6, yes. Black's king safety has been stripped. Here, black resigned. It's a mate in two, actually. If king e7, check here it will be bishop g5 checkmate such a strong attacking position yeah there are, there are other resources even even more accurate picked up here in this particular position again delaying b takes they, there was apparently you know bishop h3 if we have a quick look at this check check and here if king f6 rook g1 this is because yeah, these bishops are both attacked and ignored, and White's just going for the king again. If, if for example, this bishop g5 is is um, mating on e7, king e6, queen e7. So this this is a really dangerous position. It's not just about g6 here. If knight f8, bishop g5, queen e7 again. Yeah. Um, so apparently this this is really another crushing way of, of playing the position. To start with bishop h3. Here yeah, again, bishop g5. It's this bishop. Well, the rook's already protecting c2 as well. But this position here is is crushing. Okay, so yeah, great attacking style here, as you can see, going straight for the king the jugular on the king side, with the rook helping a little bit, but also the sharp moves to really speed up White's attack here. Okay, let's look at another example. Morozovic is playing black here, and the rooks are both active. Look at black's rooks here, wonderful rooks compared to white's. Pawn chain a bit of a wreck. I mean, that's another. That's a symptom of kind of a dynamic pawn structure, really. That the rooks and bishops are often great. So there's short-term temporary advantages to try and exploit, you know, cause, uh, sometimes. But here, okay. Uh, what does black play? Well, what does white play first? It's white to move. Knight h4, full king. And it seems very dangerous actually because if knight takes, then there's bishop e6 winning the queen. Uh, this is show that. If rook g5, knight takes is end of the game. You know, takes here or with the queen, there's, there's going to be bishop e6. So, Monozovic has to do something else. He plays a very strong move here, out of necessity. What would you play with black if I give you five seconds, starting from now? So it goes Lock Van Welling, 2700, in the Weekend Z Netherlands of 2001. Black to play. Okay, Knight E5. So offering the rook here, and also offering this bishop for bishop e6. So white's actually more tempted to take the bishop. If he took the rook, this isn't particularly good. Check. And now here, bishop d3 check is strong. If takes, then it's a mate soon, like this. Ouch. So here, off the check here, if king f1, there's bishop d3. So basically, uh, it's not a good idea. 
to take uh, there. Uh, another weird possibility is king d1 here, but again, it's favoring black like this, winning the queen. So, uh, so white after this took on f5. So he wants this bishop e6 tactic. Black played knight d3 check after king f1. Rook takes f2, king g1. Now again, you can't take this knight's immune because of bishop e6. So what black play in the midst of all this, uh, guess what black plays? Uh, will you guess it? I'm not sure this is the kind of move which is easy to guess, but I've given you a clue. You want your cake in and eat it. The cake being the f5 knight. You want to eat it without too much punishment <laughs> or fretting to. So what do you play here with black? If I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, king b8. Yep, you just keep the fret on. Doesn't matter if it moves, there's other stuff to look forward to if it moves. White now plays queen e6. We'll look at some other defenses after. We now see rook takes f5, and look at both rooks, they're really like almost mating the white king here. Um, in this position, h4 was played. H h4 was played. Which gives black an escape square, but now bishop d6 rules that escape square out. And after rook f1, black to play here, beautiful move. It's actually a mate in two. Can you see how black mates in two? If I give you five seconds here, you might want to pause the video starting from now. Okay, rook g8, very powerful forcing move. It's mate next move after taking queen g7, it's checkmate. The escape route has been taken away from these two squares. There's nothing to be put in the way. Now hold on, let's let's look at something about this fascinating game position after king b8. Um, if the knight had retreated, I'd say, Actually, the rook on the seventh is good. There's actually uh, even stronger than Queen H3 is tempting, yeah, but Bishop D5 and White's better. But actually, with the move Queen C6 instead, we're still attacking G2, but Bishop D5 is is kind of not as effective. We just take that, and that's winning. So Queen C6 is actually winning here. If E4, then that weakens that diagonal. Black can pounce here with C4. It's going to have bishop c5 next. Queen e1, bishop c5, and that's that's easily crushing now. Um, there's nothing really black can do in this position. So yeah, it it seems like a very very interesting position to analyze um, after this this king b8. Um, so yeah, queen e6 was like the top engine choice. Another another move trying to give away a bishop. Black can just actually take here, and you see both of these rooks are still sorry if taking here. Both of these rooks are still threatening to mate. You know, White's king because if the bishop moves, then it's like mate time. So it was a very precarious position for White's king. The rook on h one's blocked in, just with some accurate play. King b eight. It's all been exposed here, so we've got this dangerous diagonal. Uh, if bishop e6 again queen queen c6 is strong okay so you get the idea it's a very very strong attacking position now this is a remarkable example here of attacking chess from both sides peter zvidla playing white against morozovic in the russian team championship of 2012 i think um one of my good friends in chess was um Tom Eden was showing me this game on my way to a, one of my only times I played in the four and CL uh, one one weekend. Um, it, it, it's pretty spectacular. So rook e8 was played, and it looks as though White's king shouldn't be in the centre here. White can't castle a queen side. White plays bishop d3. Okay, pointing at h7. Now Morozovic 
plays bishop f6. So Peter's Vidal playing white. So we see now a necessary move. The queen is pinned, knight e5. So unpinning. Now threatening this seemingly really dangerous queen h7. <laughs> and can you see what black played in this position? Um, black wants to really fight for central control. I guess that's the clue. So what would you play here with black? If I give you five seconds, starting from now. Okay, knight c6, very logical, putting pressure on e5. White takes on h7, check. And yeah, it does seem a bit scary to have this knight fork. Yeah, <laughs> but in this particular position, the king moving is check, so it's crazy stuff. Bishop e5 is played. And now, uh, Morozovic plays king takes c6. White castles queen side, which is scary looking. But isn't this queen attacked? The thing is, there's bishop e4 check if if the queen is taken. It's it's totally crazy position. It really is. <laughs> I'll just show you what happened. Bishop takes e5. Check. Now king c7. Rook takes. Rook takes, rook takes, and in this position, uh, it seems blacks the exchange down, but clever forcing moves transform this position. Bishop f4 check, putting the king on a light square. Basically, if king here or here, the king's on a light square. Yeah, goes to c2, and the point is now. Bishop b7 hits e4 and and h8. So that light square putting the queen king is critical. So <laughs> it ends up being an equal position after all this. It's one of the most ridiculous draws of 2002. Peaceful draw after. <laughs> and drawn here, <laughs> opposite colored bishops. Three pawns each. Just hair raising draw. This this wasn't the typical grandmaster draw, I think you'll agree. In this position after rook e eight. <laughs> Bishop t three. It's it's just the both players uh Zvida needs to be looked at from his sacrifices in another video. Both players are extremely dynamic, aggressive, tactical. But and this is the kind of stuff which can occur. It's crazy. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this, the tail end of this combination to be the exchange down, the little finesse of putting the king on the light square. It's beautiful stuff, I think. Okay, let's go on to another example. Again, against Peter's Vidler. Let's stick with another Peter's Vidler game. So. Actually, pieces with that. So he's playing white. Morozovic is playing black here. This is in the Russian Super Finals in Moscow, 2007. You know, two of the leading Russian players in the world, really. Um, two of the very strongest. Also, of course, there's other ones now. Um, but yeah, they're up there, the 2700s. So, Peter Zvidla played Bishop E3 here. <clears throat> So this looks very clever in its own right. Let's have a look at the contraption set up. If black takes on e3, then rook takes g6 is dangerous, or at least a draw. If takes, then it's mate. And if the king moves, then rook takes e6. And it's it's going to be apparently equal with best play with rook takes c3. Engines give this as, as equal. But uh, yeah, no, after bishop e3, instead of all that, what does black play here instead of bishop takes e3? If I give you five seconds, let's pause the video starting from now. Okay, rook takes c3, trying to open some lines against the king. After takes, check. 
okay the king is tempted now onto um, a light square actually it's um, it played to king c2 here now knight d4 check yeah trying to get this c file open get the rook in might have avoided that and he doesn't want the knight lurking around there he took with the bishop so keeping his c pawn the c file close for a moment e takes now here I think is where white went wrong white had a last chance here apparently to keep the position equal with rook g2 uh, so if check um, this doesn't seem to be much better than in this position not not playing rook b2 but playing king c2 if rook b2 then that's good good for black after taking here but actually with king c2 um, apparently this is uh, potentially okay for white but uh, yeah in the critical position here c4 was played immediately and this this makes all the difference the rook is not on the second rank helping the defense here we have check check and the point is the check here is wrenching open potentially now this whole diagonal after d3 drops it's not just about the pass pawn it's about the whole diagonal so taking this pawn out critical check check now if king c2 now that's actually a mate in two of d3 check because here queen d2 is mate so the king went on a1 but now just bishop f6 so this is going to be termination and you might think well rook g6 actually doesn't do anything here because the bishop's also defending the h8 square so that can just be taken we've got both these squares defended so it's actually hopeless against d4 to d3 d3 check here it's it's impossible to defend it it seems um so white resigned here Piers Vidler resigned another game interesting I'd like to show you final little example um in the town memorial in this position black had just played bishop e4 black was Sergei Arkhipov so town memorial of 1992 Morozovich continued with intuitive move you might think Bishop d3 offering bait to open up this g file seems in principle dangerous <laughs> we have a comedic setup to attack Black's king on the g file with this rook and Black actually I don't know maybe Black does best actually just to take care to be on the safe side <laughs> rather than liberating white's pieces but still white is, is slightly better here in any case instead <laughs> yeah maybe it is asking for trouble even if he thought his calculations were safe just in principle it seems to be asking for trouble if black can get away with it and win this pawn as well win the ending fine set up a blockade on e6 is that really going to happen rook g1 bishop takes h3 so black is um, also hitting the rook though so maybe he's counting on this now the punishment begins e6 so we've got the rook and the bishop hitting g7. Black now played bishop takes e6. So this was the ingenious defense plan to punish Morozovich for this childish play, apparently childish play, because surely here yeah, it doesn't matter about g7. Let's see. Well, in fact, white can safely just play rook takes g7 in this position and then move the rook but actually he played for even more here can you see what white played it's actually crushing black no chance really it seems more than plus three this next move if I give you five seconds starting from now okay bishop takes g7 after bishop takes so rook sack the point is here 
this is a loose piece. This is a very valuable resource basically for the attacking player at any loose piece within combinations. Bishop c3, check. Not only it's been picked up, it's setting up a pin now after bishop takes b4, check. That pin is celebrated not by the execution of the pin but by celebrating the pin with bishop takes h7. So interesting, mates here. <laughs> Black tries f5. Off the check, he's losing the rook on a8. And he's a bishop down. Not very nice. <laughs> uh, so after c5, bishop takes now. Black resigned. Uh, there's not much better than c5. He's, he's a bishop down, basically. Okay. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of Morozovich. I think he's one of the most exciting grandmasters, and his repertoire creates these weird positions people opponents don't understand. Taking you know players off the beaten path sometimes, as well as complex positions. You know from the very start of games. Very exciting stuff. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.